Hello there, my fellow Space Dawi, and welcome back to some Warhammer 40k lore. In today's episode on the resolute and inventive leagues of Votan, aka the Kin, we're gonna go over another aspect of their faction, namely the Hernkin and the Cathonian Mining Guilds. The former are the pioneers and the explorers of the Kin, while the latter then come to exploit what the pioneers have discovered. It is definitely a vital aspect of their society, since it contributes to their growth and sustainability. All that said, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and let us learn more about them, shall we? The Hernkin are those of the kin who serve as the Leagues of Votan's explorers, scouts, pioneers, and prospectors. To the kin, any region of blank space on the map is a mystery that needs solving. The desire to plumb the depths of the void, to discover the secrets and claim its riches, is ingrained in their psyche, as is the need to know what, if any, sources of danger would lurk in the shadows. The Hernkin are without a doubt the furthest traveled of their entire race. Their sturdy boots have left their prints in the eons old dust of lost moons. They have skimmed across the baking plains and through the carnivorous jungles of worlds never before seen by the kin. The bands of the Hernkin leave their kindreds behind for decades at a time, forging out into the dark space beyond the furthest trade route, or shining their lights into regions long declared lost or forbidden. In many galactic cultures, such a wanderer's role might fall to an outcast or a loner, and be synonymous with rebellion against confining social structures. By comparison, becoming one of the Hernkin brings great honor among the Leagues of Votan. By ranging the Dark Void, the Hernkin do great service to the Votan. Their wild and ruthless existence leads the Hernkin to see unbelievable sights, uncover ominous galactic secrets and experience countless, and often dangerous, adventures. All of these experiences ensure that, when the Hernkin do return to the ancestors, they will bring with them swathes of enriching experience and knowledge. The Leagues also benefit greatly from the efforts of the Hernkin. It is often an intrepid band of these brave scouts which identifies and warns of an impending peril, be it a star preparing to go supernova, a hidden webway portal employed by Dark Eldar slavers, or an unrushing Orc Wa, or any other unseen threat. They also locate potential trading partners for the Kindreds, mark navigable void channels, scout viable regions for Kindred settlements, and, maybe most important of all, locate valuable resources to be exploited. To achieve all of that, however, the Hernkin prepare to make a great sacrifice. It is this that makes them heroes in the eyes of their fellow kin. It is definitely not easy for family-focused clones to spend such extended periods of time away from the comfort of their kindred and hold. Moreover, there is always a danger that, if the band is wiped out far away from League Space, the Hernkin may never return to share their experience with the ancestors. That these brave scouts are willing to take on such risks says a lot about their character. It also speaks volumes of their race inbuilt drive to survive, no matter the difficulty or danger. The Hernkin take great pride in the perils of their role as frontiersmen. It is maybe unsurprising that they are among the most rugged and dour of all their people holding hard to the bonds of loyalty binding their pioneering bands together, who are all the family they have so far from home. Obviously, the Leagues ensure that the Hernkin are as well equipped as possible to face the dangers inherent to the role. Guild affiliates furnish bands of Hernkin with the most advanced and redoubtable scout vessels in kindred space, piloted by Voidmasters as courageous as they are talented. A wide array of armored gunships and rugged exploration and combat vehicles provide the Hernkin with transportation able to brave even the most hazardous alien landscape. Meanwhile, their suits of Enviro-hardened void armor are supplemented with an impressive array of weaponry, both kin-portable and vehicle-mounted, along with a range of energy field generators, survival gear, and pan-spectral scanners. The signature vehicles of these fellows are the Magna Coil Grav Bikes, also known as Magna Coil Bikes. These are anti-gravitic skimmers used as the main vehicle of the Hernkin Pioneers. 
It is fast, maneuverable, and capable of navigating the most difficult terrain or even bodies of water with ease. The KIN's panspectral scanners are useful both in prospecting and in battle. They can detect an incredible range of energy spectra and not only through solid matter, but even across multidimensional wavelengths, ensuring that the Hernkin are rarely if ever surprised by even the most cunning and esoterically empowered foes. The scanners are equally unlikely to miss the presence of natural resources that the kin would prize. When such rich discoveries are made, the Hearn can mark the location using powerful claim beacons, whose multispectral energy signatures are bounced back along networks of relay satellites all the way to league space. It is at these times that the Cothonian mining guilds rumble into action. The mining guilds, which carry out most of the leagues of OTAN's mining and resource extraction operations, embody the very belligerence and acquisitiveness of the kin. Fearless in the cause of locating, securing, and harvesting resources for the race, the Cathonians think nothing of braving environments so extreme that all other kin would balk at a hazard. From violent gravity maelstroms, meteor collision fields, savagely irradiated nebulae and plague-ridden planetoids to sweltering magma caverns, crushing oceanic depths, hypersonic shard storms, the gnawing fringes of black holes, and even nightmarish space hulks adrift on the tides of the warp. The kin of the Cathonians take grim pride in braving all of it. This bloody-minded approach extends equally to living or sentient hazards, such as predatory aliens or hostile stellar empires. Included in this category are many advanced and militarized starfaring civilizations, who also had entirely legitimate claims to the resources that the Cathonians covered. Many surveyors of the Cathonian mining guilds think nothing of assessing another race's assets, such as plasma storage plants, promethium stockpiles, void-going ore barges, and even fully functional industrial infrastructure as nothing more than a desirable concentration of a harvestable resource. Such assets are viewed no differently than veins of precious ore locked away in a rock face, waiting to be claimed. In such cases, trade is often attempted as the first recourse, because war is wasteful. If that fails, then violent acquisition is viewed as the next logical step. As the kin saying has it, luck has, need keeps, toil earns. In short, those who want something the most and fight the hardest for it deserve to possess it. If that someone is the kin, then what they claim by conquest is theirs by right. Of course, not all kin miners join a Cathonian guild. There are hundreds of unaffiliated asteroid mines and void harvesting operations scattered across league space. However, a substantial majority of kin miners do choose to acquire Cathonian guild accreditation for a firmly pragmatic reason. Most Cathonian guilds are rich and prestigious, enough to operate their own fleets of ruggedly fortified vessels, which give them an edge among the fierce competition for the richest claim. Most are also willing to supplement the equipping and surgical cybernetic augmentation of their members, investing in future success. Most of the kin who join the Cathonians are also adapted for hardiness. They possess clone skins that imbue them with hyperdense bone structure, extreme tolerance to harmful radiation, the ability to perceive esoteric energy spectra, vacuum-hardened organs, circulatory systems, and so on. Added to that, they willingly submit to repeated surgical procedures which augment them with reinforced skull plates, advantageous bionics, artificial organs, and other mechanical adaptations to help them endure the most extreme environment. There is a culture of cheerful rivalry between Cathonians regarding how heavily adapted and scarred they are, both for and because of their labors. The hardiest among them are called luggers, quite literally those who carry the most, both literally and metaphorically. With typical understatement, the leagues refer to most resource harvesting operations as mining. It is quite a humble word for such an extreme range of technologically breathtaking operations undertaken at a colossal scale. Global magna extraction and tectonic delving topple mountain ranges and shatter planets, as the kin free the resources they want from the surrounding extraneous planetary structures. Stars grow dim under the attentions of Cathonian stellar siphons, 
Stellar phenomena that humanity viewed with superstition are torn apart and processed by the kin via methods like atom delving and transetheric resubstantiation. Try saying that ten times fast. Nor do the Cathonians shy away from mining operations in an active war zone. Indeed, it is not uncommon for such conflicts to have been triggered by the Cathonians themselves. Their ships are capable of deploying temporary defenses, from atmospheric engines dropped from gunships to energy field dome generators and heavily armored harvester plants. These will then be used by kin soldiers to defend their ongoing extraction process. The Cathonians themselves will gladly fight alongside the Harvkin and the Hernkin, also as sappers, combat engineers, indomitable line breakers, or extreme environment infantry. In particular, the Cathonian berserks relish the opportunity to turn their concussion molds and heavy plasma axes against the enemy, smashing, bludgeoning, and blasting as they compete to become the toughest of luggers. And this, my gold rush prospecting friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Hernkin pioneers and what comes after them in the form of the Cathonian mining guilds for today. I suggest you double your security on your local Promethium silo, because to these fellows it is just another resource that needs harvesting. It is a bit funny too, in my opinion anyway, imagining these guys just happily smacking away at an ore vein while people are shooting and dying next door. If there were any doubts that these are in fact Warhammer Fantasy Dwarves but in space, this video definitely proves it. Anyway, I look forward to reading your thoughts on these extreme miners in the comments below. If you found this informative or entertaining, do leave a like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for future content. Thanks a lot, and the Emperor protects.